Hello, hello, this is Jilly Bling, and I have project number three to share using Irresistible, Blo Irresistible Blooms, which is an online exclusive. So you can get it online only, and it is a product suite. The product suite includes, of course, the bundle, which we'll be using today. Um, beautiful designer paper, which is these three, plus there's quite a few more. And, oh, you know what, I have the flyer. Here's the flyer. And right there, that QR code will take you there. Effective March 1st, you could get this bundle. So here's the bundle. Here's the designer paper. This is six by six paper, 48 sheets. And the frosted gems, loose frosted dots. And this beautiful paper, which we used on the last project, and these embossing folders. And it says basic 3D embossing folders, and it comes in a set of three folders for $30. And then, of course, classic letter stamp set is available too. Plus a whole, a whole lot of other um, online products. <clears throat> so, here is today's project. Isn't that pretty? And are you wondering, how did I get that so shiny? Have you used heat and stick powder or gold leafing? I know when it came out, I think everyone was using it. It's still there, and I haven't used it in a few years. Um, and so we'll do that today. And that's a lot of fun. And I have a few tips on um, being successful with heat and stick powder and the leafing. And then also, this is a fun fold, and I have a few tips on um, getting this to work out just fine. The card closes... Number one is you want to get it through the mail. And it doesn't completely open flat, but that's okay because chances are it will be on your countertop setting up. So, you ready to get started? So in the catalog on page 128, um, item number six is heat and stick powder. And then the gold leafing is on page 143. Right here, it's right down here. So we'll be doing that today. And here is a template for making the folding part. Ooh. And this is cut to eight and a half by two and three quarters. And I will um, list all of the paper cut sizes on my blog, which is jillybling.com. Once I get all five um, done in this Gotta Have It series. So this is where the idea came from. Um, there was a stamp set last year with Celebration called Friendly Hello. And um, I made this card last year. And I had it sitting out just because I love it. So that's where the layout came from. Ooh, this is all almost ready to go. So let's do maybe... Maybe we could cut the leaves, all kinds of stuff over here. Um, let's start out by cutting these leaves, just because that paper was on top. And you need three leaves. And these leaves, they come in the bundle, and each one of them is a little different. So that's the leaves. Um, we'll stamp the flowers in a minute. This bit right here is from Eden Dyes. Oh, we will be using Eden Dyes and then also the Irresistible Blooms Dyes. And that is for this frame right here. So let's cut that out of this. This is upside down. It's like all the pieces are right here and they could be stuck down. Well, let's just, just jump right in. We'll start with the base. And this gold paper, it comes in a three pack. It's called Fine Shimmer Paper. It's beautiful. It comes with gold, fresh freesia, and um, soft succulent. And it's really hard to cover up such beautiful paper, but the designer paper is pretty too. But it makes for a stunning card.
Isn't that pretty? Look at the print on here. I love that. And we're going to get a color refresh with the new catalog. And demonstrators will know about the new um, colors. It's going to be, when I say color refresh, that means that chances are the core colors, the brights, neutrals, regals, and subtles are going to be changed a bit. And of course, the ink colors will get five new ink colors. Um, but there's going to be a shake up. And I say that because I know that Lost Lagoon is going to be in there. And also, Pretty Peacock is going to be part of our, our, our colors. I don't know what, I don't know if they'll be in colors or if they're going to be part of the core group. But that's exciting. Little change. As soon as I know anything, um, I'll let you know. New catalog is coming up in May. And if you order from me regularly, you'll get a new catalog. And if not, let me know. And um, it's $10 for a catalog, and that's reimbursed with your first order. And let me know, and I could get you one sent. Let me know by March 27th. Or um, if we're in person, let me know and I could get it to you anytime. Prices on everything are going up. Okay, so I folded the black base paper in half, and now this front part, this top part, I'm just folding it back. So, you could score it if you like, but you don't need to pull out your score tool yet for that. We'll pull it out for this piece right here, in just a minute. And I'm going to save um, the piece that attaches to the top, the movement piece. I'll save um, that for the very end after it's fully decorated to attach that. Isn't that just beautiful? The soft colors with the gold border and then the black background. Oh, I love this. So this is a Gotta Have It box. If you get the bundle through me, um, and if you can, use this host code. I would love to send you the five card kits as a thank you gift. It's like, oh my gosh, this card is already coming together. Isn't that just beautiful? But these are my colors. I love blues and greens. Okay, so that little bit is pretty much done. That's the card base. Okay, so this piece, this is going to become the middle one. Unfortunately, you can't see that too much because I put the flowers on there. goes right here just a layer and I have to stamp on this let me do that now so I'm going to use this little leaf which is this one right here I'm going to put it in memento ink and just add a hint of color and I just want it um, at the bottom just like a little border Okay, now let that dry. Sometimes I'm too quick to start coloring with the blends. And then the Memento ink, it kind of, it smears a bit. Okay, so Versamark on colored cardstock. Most of the time, not all the time, you take Versamark, put it on colored cardstock. Whatever your stamped image is will appear one hue darker, no matter what color. So... You can't see it, but if you wait just like maybe a minute, let the ink soak into the paper. Can you see those little dots on there? Um, and I say most colors. Here, let's try this one. I don't know if it'll work. Yeah, it works a little bit. 
but this paper isn't quite as thirsty as the regular cardstock. See how there's just a few little freckles on there? But it, it doesn't, well, I like to say it doesn't work on black, but it's just very faint. So if I put this on here, it's like, no, there's not much of a change. But um, it works with most colors. I'd say 95% of the colors. Like this one, it's really coming through just fine now. But any color cardstock to make it a little darker. I'm wondering if I have scraps around here so we could try one, one more color. No scraps. Um, okay, let's do the scoring. So to score, where's that little template? Right here. It's underneath everything. So I'm going to score it at three and a half and then six. Three and a half and six. Sometimes my scoring isn't so good. I think the paper shifts just a little bit and I don't catch it. Okay, so these bits can be attached. Probably should have colored my little leaves first. I'll do that now. So to color the leaves, see how there's just a hint of color in the leaves? And that is done with <clears throat> soft sea foam, which is the same exact color the paper is. But you know all these little understated little things is what makes our card so special. So that's soft seafoam dark and soft seafoam light. You can see some of my black memento leaves. Well, you know what? I just re-inked that pad, but they're a little bit smearing. Okay, that looks good. I think my glue is getting jammed up. So this one goes here. Now first I was going to make it the um, designer paper, seafoam designer paper. So this one, this one, and then that one in the middle. But because of how it opens, I think it might be challenging to write on the side because it doesn't fully go flat. Therefore, right there. Oh, that one, the, um, the verse mark shows up really good. So the verse mark, you could kind of see the little speckles on there, but not very much. So much that I don't know that it would be worth it. You know what would be nice, though, is if you put clear embossing powder on it, then it would be like an embossed finish on the black. That's some understated elegance. That's pretty. So my little piece of designer paper underneath this frame right here, I did a whoops. And I think that I could cover it up, but I'm going to have to admit to it, because when I flip it over to put glue on it, you're going to say, What's going on there? But before I use it, I cut it a quarter inch too small. See right here? And I'm like, I don't have that much paper. So right there, you can't even tell. And especially when the frame is over it, you can't even tell. So how'd I fix it? A little piece of white paper. I just stuck it together like a puzzle. But that's gonna be stuck down with glue, it'll be fine. 
little bits in here that could go out. Okay, so it's time to do heat and stick powder and gold leafing. This is so much fun. So we're going to use Versamark pad, and I purposely re-ink the pad because that's important so you get plenty of um, heat and stick powder onto the paper or the, the Versamark, plenty of Versamark ink onto the paper to hold the heat and stick powder. So I'm going to do the thank you again. And I particularly like um, when using gold leafing, I like images that are a little bit bolder. Like this is, if this was a font and it was really fine detailed, um, there wouldn't be that much area for the heat and stick powder to attach and then the gold leafing. And um, sometimes if it's too thin of an area, it doesn't hold very well. But this is a perfect stamp. So, make sure it's well inked. I'm going to put this right in the middle. I hear Bo out there barking like someone is there. We'll see. Okay. And I do have a tip on the heat and stick powder. So hold on just a minute. Heat and stick powder. This powder a real long time ago when I got started stamping, heat and stick powder came out and we were using it to attach glitter to like snowy scenes because um, you would use the heat and stick powder, heat it, it would be tacky and then you could put glitter all over everything. Glitter is kind of gone, but the gold leafing is fun. So before I heat this, one um, note, if you could remember, is you don't want to heat it too long, which is what a lot of people do. Um, they do wrong. If you heat it too long, the adhesive, the heat and stick powder, heat and stick powder is just like um, very finely granulated adhesive. Um, if you heat it too long, the adhesive soaks into the paper and then you touch it and it's just a little bit tacky, but not tacky enough to hold anything. So I'm going to heat it until it's no longer white and um, the granules turn into an adhesive. As soon as it turns clear, I'm going to move on to a different area. Also, working on thinner paper, it heats up much faster than working on cardstock. But again, don't heat it too long or else it won't be sticky enough. <clears throat> Okay, so if this was embossing powder, I would have heated that much more thorough so that the thank you would have been like a, a sheen, shiny um, coating of, of plastic. This is a little bit lumpy, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be sticky. And I'll show you. Okay, here we go. So it's okay if that waits a minute or two. It doesn't matter. It'll remain sticky. If I stuck my finger on it, I would be able to hold it. So, gilding leaf. This is the leafing flakes. And when you open up your container, this one is almost empty. It is, you're like, oh, okay. But if you were to take the container when it's brand new, dump it out, there is so much in one container. And I have a little box I dedicated to this. It's kind of a mess but it works out fine. So these are just all kinds of little bits of old um, leafing flakes. And don't, don't, don't take the time to try to use them. One time, Mama was trying to be a frugal stamper and she um, was using all this stuff and it looked more like, a, um, like this kind of shine. It wasn't as bright of a shine as this right here. Take a whole leaf, and if a little chunk comes off, that's good, because that means there's no heat and stick powder, and just move it onto a different area. But you want your leafing to be um, a, a piece, not the little crumbled up chunks down there. That doesn't see how shiny this is. That's the goal. And it's sticking, too, everywhere the heat and stick powder is
and there might be a more effective way to do it, but this way works, and for some reason, I just have fun when I do this. Like, look at that one. That's a good one. I probably don't need that much, but... I think I got it. Nope, there's a little bit here. Like I said, there's probably people that do this all the time and they know exactly what to do. I'm just pretending. And having fun. I'll use some of these pieces. But what Mama was doing was taking the brush and picking it up and putting it on there. And it just it didn't turn out as shiny. She's like, I don't know what I did wrong. I was like, oh, I think I know. Thank you for being frugal, but okay, when I touch over here, there's a little sticky, which means there's more opportunity to put leafing. See how lightweight it is? <laughs> One time I had a girlfriend and she sneezed. Guess what happened to the leafing? It was everywhere. Okay, so I don't feel any more sticky bits. So now on here, whatever is not sticking to the stamped heat and stick um, image, it's going to come off. Isn't that fun? Probably should put it on harder. But if I push it too hard, I'm going to lose some of the, um, the shine. See it happening? Isn't that fun? And look how bright it is. Okay, I think that's good enough. I don't want to take too much off. And I don't want to rub it too much because then it will lose some of its bright shine but see right there how you can't see the center of the Y that's a little better You know what that reminds me of? When I was a kid, I used to feed my fish stuff that looked like that. It wasn't gold, but it was really thin little flakes. Okay. Here. That's what sweatshirts are for, right? To clean up images, get all the little powder off. Okay, so, and you didn't notice this, right? I'm going to stick that down onto here. You know, I probably should cut off the top bit of that white because I don't want it to show through. Let me see if this one showed through. So you can see a little bit of white up there. Oh, the things we do. Just to save one half a sheet of paper because I did a whoops. I've been doing a lot of whoopses lately. Okay. That's going to make all the difference. Now I could put glue over that. And glue on here. My glue is dried up. Okay. There. No one knows. Oops. A little extra. Okay, stick. Then this just gets put on. And you know, I was thinking, as with the last video, I pulled out my adhesive sheets. And I was thinking, oh, I probably should have used that on here. But um, 
I didn't. I think the first card, the black and white card, I used the adhesive sheets. Okay, so this card is right in the middle, a little bit over the gold. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so next, I think it is the flowers. So the flowers, where's the paper? The flowers, I'm gonna stamp them in, I'm done with the template, in Memento. I'm gonna do, I just need three. So I'm gonna do, you know what, I think I'll do them all little because this spot to put them on is not very big. Okay, here's little. And to color them in, I'm going to keep these um, really delicate and light. So just a hint of pool party light, a hint of saffron, and then color lifter to make it real soft. So saffron dark in the middle. I'll just do one. Saffron light. And pool party. Just a little bit. Just because the colors of the card are um, blue, green, soft, kind of subtle. I was gonna do it smoky slate so it looked like a white flower but I, I like how Pool Party came out. Just a little bit of color. Then Color Lifter to kind of soften it so you can't really see where Pool Party ends and where it starts. And then there's dies for the little flowers. And when you look at this one to that one, you're like, oh, you stamped that really good. But it's more, um, <clears throat> I'll hold these up. It's more um, black light marker. So see how that's like solid black and this one isn't? I took my marker and just filled it in. I didn't go all the way to the edge of the black area because I know I couldn't do it as good as a stamp does it. But see what a difference that makes? It makes it look um, real vibrant. So there's my three flowers. And they're gonna go on to here. And one little note is when the card closes up, I wish I didn't have that much showing of the white flower, the back of the white flower. And also stay away from the fold. It's okay to go over this side, but just not into here. So I'm gonna start with one dimensional in the center of each of these flowers. Because I have to tuck the leaves under. So I'm purposely putting this one a little bit lower. Maybe just a little can show. So 
So I'm avoiding the fold and I don't want too much. A little bit showing is okay. And then I will do the ribbon. Do you notice there's ribbon on here? This is the gold shimmer ribbon <clears throat> and that's in the annual catalog. So right here, gold shimmer ribbon. And I'm going to do that just as a zigzag back behind the flowers. And um, I'll use glue dots to attach this. So when I was attaching it on the sample, um, I had a glue dot like right here and I put it over the top. And you could see how the glue dot kind of bunched up the ribbon. So you know what they say about hindsight. Hindsight is clear. I'm going to put the glue dot so it hides underneath the flower. I'll show you what I mean. So this ribbon is going to be here, underneath. Put the glue dot right here. Then this can tuck underneath. I didn't even get the glue dot on there. Probably would be easier to do it before I put the flowers on, huh? Glue dot. This one could go back on. Okay, so this is going to go there. Okay, ribbon is on, and now the three little leaves, and you can see that they're all a bit different. How about I think two of them should be together. These are just because they're black. It's kind of just like a shadow of a flower. Okay, that looks good. One more, and then I'll put um, some more dimensionals underneath the flowers because right now they're attached with just one, which probably would hold it, but I want to do a little bit more. Okay, looking good. So, dimensionals. Not on the ribbon. OK. 
Okay, how's that? Oops, I think that's going to get... Well, that's not good, that ribbon. And then this is kind of hitting the seam. So I'll have a glue dot hold it. Like, hold it flat. Like, stay down so it could close. And that ribbon needs to go shorter. It's getting hung up in the seam and the fold. I don't know if that helped. Oh, it just might need to move a little. Because up there it wouldn't be bad. I can make it be up there. There, now you could see it more. Okay, the leaf needs a little bit. So when you're making yours, don't get too close to the, the fold. Thought I did okay, but I keep sensing a little resistance. Ooh, that's better. Okay, so now it's time to put it together and then add some of those little loose frosted dots. So to make the card, it's gonna go in here like this, just like that. So I'm gonna put adhesive all over this bit. I think it's going to go right about there. Because it's liquid glue, I could still scooch it around a little bit. That looks straight. Okay. So, now the card will go through with the mail. So now I need adhesive just under half of this. So, I'll put it under way out to the edge. And then I'm not sure how far to go in here. So I'll just put glue on here. Then, close the door. You probably don't need to close this up. Next is the dots. Okay, so for the dots, there is Pretty Peacock, which is the dark deep blue, and then the yellow. <clears throat> so for Pretty Peacock, on this one, I did it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's do that again. One, two, three, four, five, six. <gasps> There's a dog knocking at the door. Let's see if he stays. He might decide to go back out and be sunning himself. The sun is out there. It's pretty. Oh, I've got my little picker-upper tool. <gasps> Bow. Um, how about a medium one? And a little one. Do you hear him knocking? He takes his paw and he goes, Hey, let me in. But I'm almost done. Bo, wait, wait. He says, I don't want to wait. Oh, that's a little one. So I'll do a medium and another little one. Oh, 
Okay, and then on each of the flowers, I'll do medium. In daffodil. See big ones, little ones. There's a medium. Isn't that pretty? I love how these things shine. One more. Oh, that's pink. That's um, flirty flamingo. Okay, that's today's project. What do you think? Isn't that beautiful? Okay, I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye.